Jane Teresa Anderson has been a regular guest on this station for years, usually using her skills as a dream interpreter. She's quite uncanny with it. It's not mystical at all. It's very practical and psychological. What does this dream mean to you in the context of your waking life? And it's amazing how often she asks people a couple of pertinent questions and suddenly it is all laid bare. And I think it takes a particular type of insight and intelligence to do that. Two qualities that also make an excellent writer. And that's why Jane Teresa Anderson is with us today. She has a new novel out. It's called Ninth Life. It's about a cat making her last life count at a holistic wellness centre, hoping to earn a spiritual reward in the feline afterlife. So really it's about people and spirituality, as observed by a particularly clever cat. Jane Theresa Anderson, good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm really well, thanks, Joel. Thank you for having me. Now, you've, you've written books before, but when did the fiction bug get you? I think it's probably been there all along. But, you know, I got into non-fiction writing. My first book was published in 1994, and it went on from there. But there's always been a little bit of me that wanted to break out of the non-fiction box. And my non-fiction also started to get a bit more story-based and lyrical. And then someone asked me, I think it was only a couple of years ago, what else would you, what have you not done in your life that you'd really like to do? And I heard myself say, well, write a novel, of course. And I think it was on a podcast or something, so it was pretty public. So I came home and I thought, hmm, okay. <laughs> I know right. how to write a book. You've do just it. got to sit down and write it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but of course, you know, as you know, as a writer, and fiction is a completely different ball game oh, yes. from writing nonfiction. Oh, yes. Was there something you thought you could say with a novel that you couldn't say in your factual work? I didn't come at it from that angle, but having finished writing it, I think so, yes. I think you can offer, even through a light-hearted story, you can offer people possibilities, different ways of looking at life um, on a broader palette than you do with non-fiction. So mm. I think you can open things up more. I did have to do some... Well, I didn't have to do training. I thought to myself... I'd better do some training. I'm a non-fiction author. So I did go and do a, a novel writing course for nine months. And, uh, and it was very challenging and it was good. I accepted the challenge. You know, I bucked at the challenge. I made myself do the exercises and I learned an awful lot from doing that. And some of the things I set to one side and said, that was really a good thing to learn, but I don't think I'll use that. <laughs> and other things I used. And so, um, so I did have a bit of training and then, and then the doors opened and I just had a ball writing the book. Yeah, once you let go and it starts flowing out of you, there's a pure joy in it, isn't there? Absolutely, yeah. It's joy is the exact word. I mean, I, I look back at that time writing the book and I can see myself sitting at my desk, going, oh, exciting, type, type, type. And then there was an occasion where I'd stop and I'd kind of hang out the window, almost pull my hair out, you know, where do I go? How do I get to it? Yeah, so it wasn't yeah. really joyful the whole way through. But once you got past <laughs> the hair pulling out stage, you come back to the desk, oh, I've got it. I know what's going to happen now. And you're back to the kind of joyful flow of it. <laughs> now, just a quick aside, we've got a text about the roads saying, uh, uh, on the uh, best highway, Sassafras, near the conservatory, there are major potholes. You could nearly lose your car in, says Kimbo, the courier. Uh, we had noticed before that there's one northbound out of Deloraine. There's a pothole that has been popping tyres that people have been on the highway there, have been punching their tyres into that pothole and having to go and change their wheel. Uh, so, yes, just another pothole warning there. Uh, Jane Theresa Anderson, usually our dream interpreter, but today here as author of the new book Ninth Life uh, with us there. It's, it's a very whimsical premise, the, the cat looking for its own kind of spiritual next step as it's helping people through theirs. Where did this come from? <laughs> So when I did the course, they said, don't, you don't have to do this course with an idea in mind. You, know, you will discover it as you do the course. But about three weeks before the course started, I was at home in my kitchen, dutifully doing my weights exercises to build my bones. Yep. And because that's actually quite boring to do, I always listen to a podcast, any old podcast. So I was listening to a podcast and the host was interviewing a spirit medium. And the spirit medium was sending messages from people who had passed to uh, one of the podcast hosts. And I'm standing there doing my weights thinking, this does not feel quite accurate to me. The, the spirit medium's messages were so on point, were so utterly accurate that I thought, I just a fleeting mind thought she's cheating. She's, she's, yeah, this isn't right, yeah, quite yeah, right, you know? Which is a very well-known thing that happens <laughs> in these circumstances. That's right. But at that moment, a cat passed through our garden, stopped, stared at me through the French door for about a full minute. Now, I've never seen a cat in our garden before at all. 
It was another six months before I saw the cat again. And it just stared at me. And somehow, out of the sky, dropped this idea that juxtaposed a cat. And, you know, we all think of cats. Well, we sometimes think of cats as kind of intuitive and psychic in a kind of mythical way. Yep. So this kind of cat on the one side and this maybe cheating psychic medium on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> and, the whole, and I thought, somewhere in there, there's a... Central There's a tale to be a said, book. yeah. And that's how it started. <laughs> <laughs> when did you feel that you had nailed down the personality of Cat? Oh, I love that. I started, because I did the course, they suggested exercises, you know, pick a character, pick another character, get them to talk to each other. So I think I started with the Cat and a psychic medium. So I had those characters right there at the beginning and just playfully doing the exercise. And then I realized that Cat did have a wonderful personality, an intriguing personality, an interesting personality. And at that point, I said to my tutor on the course, what if I wrote the novel from the point of view of a cat? And she said, well, you're making a very big challenge for yourself. It's not what people would normally do, <laughs> but I really like that. And that, and so I picked it up and ran with it. And I just never, at, at, at no point did I ever think I'm this. I shouldn't be doing this. I just had this cat, and she, and she developed this amazing personality that led into all the various plots and subplots. And I loved her. Now, now what does a cat see that a person misses? <laughs> So this cat, I, I, I must say that um, the cat does have the ability to talk to some people, to yep. selected people. So we do have some insight into what the cat thinks and feels. And the cat also listens into a lot of humans talking to each other. So we do get to know other characters. But the cat in this story mostly looks at life through her senses, through her smell, um, her psychic senses. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, but this particular cat has a bee in a bonnet that, Everybody should be following the rules, and she doesn't know why. Well, she has a kind of feeling that she won't graduate from her ninth life and become a spirit mentor unless she makes sure that everyone follows the rules. So she goes around everywhere. So she's quite officious, and you're not following the rules and what to do to make people follow the rules. And, um, and yes, yeah, so her character develops from there, really. You are listening to Afternoons with Joel Reinberger on 936 ABC Radio Hobart and ABC Northern Tasmania. With us is Jane Teresa Anderson talking about her new book, Ninth Life. I'm really interested in why you have chosen this setting. Like, have you been around a lot of places like the Serene Lotus Centre for Health and Wellbeing? <laughs> I do go to yoga. I've been to yoga most of my life, which yep. is not, it's not like the Serene Cent Lotus Centre for Health and Wellbeing. But I have been... Um, brushed up against various spiritual notions and various holistic practitioners. And so uh, I hope that in introducing some of the characters, I hope people can sense that there's a lot of love for a lot of the characters, but there's also yep. a lot of, a little bit of critique and a little bit of poking fun and a little bit of getting under the, under the skin as well. So, um, so yes, we've got in the book a, uh, a yoga, a yoga teacher, Obviously, the spirit medium, passing or not passing the messages from <laughs> spirits. <laughs> We've got a hypnotherapist, um, a psychotherapist, and also a marketing person because marketing is really big in well-being circles. And yeah, in, yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of fun to be had with looking at marketing. Okay. Have you noticed bad marketing in this sort of arena in your life? One, one of the characters, without giving away the story, but one of the more minor characters in the book uh, teaches the importance of abundance, about you know, how much you should charge for your services and how much more, and, you know, and multiply that by 1,000% and kind of really getting out of the box and getting a bit ridiculous. And there's a lot of marketing that I notice around that kind of philosophy about how much you should be charging and how amazing you are for your services. So I do play a lot with marketing there. And also quite early in the book, when Kat finds herself in this wellbeing centre, they immediately um, pounce upon her and they want to introduce the cat theme into their marketing. So we've constantly got why would they want the cat in their marketing? What are they trying to say? So I'm playing with the marketing angle and how really, I guess, playing throughout the whole book with how we all perceive life and the different perspectives we have. I'm interested, where in your life does the cat's spirituality come from? And, and is that the way you see yourself? Everybody says, don't they, that the fiction, and particularly the first one. The you, first one and the, the main one. character of, the first several and the main <laughs> character of, there's a lot of you in them. That's right. Um, there's not much of my personality that's like Kat, except that she is a little bit um, 
whimsical, which I am. <laughs> yes, yes, you are. <laughs> she's a bit lyrical, which I am. And she's a bit, uh, uh, yeah, she's the funny side of things, which I do. But she also has a lot of characteristics, which are definitely not mine. The rule keeping, the keeping everyone in line. But she is also very inquisitive. And we, particularly the book plays a lot with metaphysical concepts. And of course, that, that is me as well. But I'm not Cat. Um, cat is there simply because that cat did arrive and look at me through the window <laughs> that day. <laughs> I'm just going to call you an author in denial there, Jane Theresa Anderson. Thank you Anderson. very much, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> the book is yeah. called Ninth Life. Where can people get a copy of it? From Amazon. From Amazon. Yeah. Nice and easy. And it's the thing where they you order one, they print it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> print on demand. Nice, easy way to go. Jane Theresa